friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. I look like a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in makeup today because um, today is Mother's Day. Yeah, that's why I'm in this Christian girl autumn fit. I oh. mean, to be fair, this dress is very slay. Titty. It's very titty centered. It has cutouts on the side and it's backless. Slutty. But it's cold in my house, so that's why I'm wearing a sweater. I feel it. Un yeah. vestido. What was I going to say? Today's Mother's oh, Day. Oh, that's a dress, huh? Yeah. Un sweater. Is that a sweater in Spanish? Might be. En español. Might be. What were you saying? Um, how are we doing this week? I think good. Yeah. Pretty I feel good. I feel better this week than I did last week. Yeah. I Some would say days that. I didn't. Like yesterday was bad, but then it was good. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, mentally. <laughs> but also, I feel like, well, two two weeks ago, like mm. the last episode, I was on my period. And mm. it was late, literally because I was so stressed. Yeah. So thankfully, I didn't have that kind of stressful ass week this yeah, week. Yeah, no, I feel that. I just um, finished my period yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was the day where I decided, you know, during your period where you're like, and I'm done having one. Yeah. And you just free ball it. You just free bleed it. Yeah. I'm like, it's in God's hands now. And then you know what happens? My uterus always listens to me. Mine doesn't. Mine's like, I'm going to ruin every pair of underwear you own. And I'm <laughs> like, listen, do what you got to do, babe. I'm not wearing a tampon anymore. <laughs> like, I'm, I give up. I give up, bitch. And I've tried free bleed underwear which I have worn and I do like on like my last days, but on my heaviest days, bitch, I can't. Yeah. It's like I'm walking around with a wet, wet a rag and put it between your legs and walk around like that and tell yourself, ask yourself if that's nice. Yeah. It's not. It's nice when you're like sleeping, like to go to bed with. But even then choice. I'll wake up. Like if it's heavy, yeah. I'll wake up, bitch. Yeah. I've been like I've been like microdosing my uterus to take smaller tampons because mm. for some reason for the love of God I can never find the giant ones the ultras the ultras Michelob ultras that's what I like to call them <laughs> <laughs> we use a Michelob Tampax. Tampax ultras yeah no yeah the ultras are the best because they last the longest mm -hmm. and by a by longest, I mean they last longer than a smaller one. And they're not cardboard. Who the frick wants to put an Amazon Prime box up your... When vagina? I travel and I forget tampons and, like, I have to buy ones in the hotel and they're the nothing fucking worse. cardboard ones. There's Nothing worse. I'm free bleeding. I'll destroy Dude, my underwear. one time in high school, I, f like, ran out of tampons. So I went and asked my volleyball coach, like, during school hours, I walked to her class and asked her, do you have a tampon? Mm -hmm. And she gave me one. Tell me why that thing... It wasn't even in an applicator. It's just in that little package. Like I know. I, like I'm going to stick that, that up. paper bag. She handed it to me and I went in the bathroom and I was like, what is this? A joke? <laughs> yeah. Like how the fuck am I supposed to put that bitch up there? I remember when I was at the Pro Bowl, I was on my period and I, that was another time where I forgot Tampa. So I had to buy cardboard ones from the, from the fucking Nothing hotel. Nothing worse. And, um, the last day I like thought that was like one of those days where I was like, fuck you to my uterus i'm not wearing another tampon yeah and of course i bled heavy like i wasn't <laughs> bleeding at all and then of course i bled yeah. heavy. and then i asked every girl in that bathroom not one of them had a tampon one, not one i feel like i was more scared of toxic shock syndrome my entire life than i probably should have been yeah like i constantly feel like i have a t i forgot to take a tampon out i'm absolutely convinced like right now i feel like i forgot to take one out but i know i, I feel like <laughs> Like I feel like about my 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 like the you know how people do Kegel exercises yeah to like build your pelvic floor. Mine is to make sure I don't have a tampon in there. <laughs> I'm trying to shoot it. I out. feel like connected to my punani the same way like Awa. Really? You know what I mean? Like I I know everything that's going on in there. Like I plug in and I'm like she's good. Like I just know sure okay. everything going on in there. For that's like what the one thing I'm acutely aware of at all times. So I, don't, I was never really afraid of that because I was like, I'm never going to forget that that bitch is up there. Never sure, in a yeah. million years. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I was just like absolutely shocked that not one girl had a tampon. Uh, I will say a lot of them tried to help me find one and no, literally nobody had one. And someone told me they have them in the bathrooms upstairs. That doesn't help me. I can't go upstairs. The stairs were blocked. I couldn't go up there. Dang. Which I do think they should be free, first of all. And they should be in every public restroom. Like, like at Disneyland, they are. 
Yeah, but it was a football facility, and they're the women's restrooms. Of course, they don't give a fuck about like. They're like, mm, yeah. they don't play on the team. I don't care. Yeah. Um, I but, wonder if for professional like women athletes, if they put them in there, they should. They should. And um, I had to fucking you know when you got to fold up toilet paper, Ugh. you got to rough it. Like it feels like real man versus wild. You know those pictures of Kim Kardashian as like dressed like a pilgrim, mm-hmm. and they put Ethel Kane behind <laughs> yeah. it. It's so funny. That's every time. me when I have to wear toilet paper yeah. in my underwear, dude. And you're wrapping it around to yeah. the crotch of your underwear, and then it just feels like you have windbreakers on. Like it's like <laughs> like that's how it feels. I feel like I'm starting a fire with my with my thighs. It's awful. I could. And then you pull it on and Tinder. then there's like, it's all like rolled up. Like, yeah. And, then, just, and then you, you have to like rip it. You have to rip it. <laughs> Dude, that shit's wild. That's the true definition of roughing it. Yeah. Actually. Though. Of being a person who gets their period. Dude, I watch. Okay. So you know how I told y'all already. Wait, first of all, I want to say this before I forget. The last episode I saw someone commented um, that am I the asshole thing start at 30 minutes and someone commented underneath it and goes, they talk for 30 minutes. Hey, bitch, it's a podcast. Hey, it's a podcast. You're supposed to talk. They're new guys. It's okay. I'm just saying, hey, it's a podcast. Like, you know what I'm saying? We call this our Zoomies. So Zoomies yeah. will be for the first however long I decide they will be. Yeah. And then we're going to talk. And also, just so you know, new people, uh, we don't do Am I the Asshole every time. No, we don't. It's my world and you're living in it. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. Anyways, what was I? what was I talking about? I don't know. I said, I wanted to say this before I forgot. I know. And now I forgot the other thing I was going to say. That's all worked up about these new newbies in the comments. Oh, we were talking about rough. Oh, I remember. Okay. I remember. Okay. So, you know, how I told you all already that when I say I watch something nine times out of 10, I'm lying. And by that, I mean, I just watched Trixie and Katya watch it. Sure. So I watched them watch that survivor show. Have you seen it on Netflix? It's new. Is that the name of the show? No, it's called like, <laughs> it's called something. It's called like the expedition or some shit like that. It's like, it's a brand new series. I want to tell our dad to watch it. He loves because he loves shit like that. But honestly, it looks really interesting. Like we went to the Oscars and they were showing like, I don't know if it was on documentaries or foreign films. I think it was on documentaries and they had that one about the elephants and they Mm -hmm, ended up winning. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I literally told you, I watched that movie because our dad watches every every documentary that's ever existed. But I I keep forgetting. I'm going to tell him tonight when I see him, but like, it's literally like, naked and afraid mm-hmm. but they're not naked and they drop them in alaska in the winter and okay. they're in and they have to like form teams and then they just have to survive is that not what survivor is no survivors di- i feel like survivor is different because well first of all they put you on a tropical island okay right so maybe it is different don't come for me i've never watched survivor no me neither but like this one looked insane like they they like start going insane they start going crazy a little bit okay well first of all a lot of them bitch out because some of them drink water and it's like poisonous and then they almost kill themselves so they have to be taken off the show oh my god and like if they ever want to leave they just shoot a flare gun and then they get picked up and they get taken like in hunger games yeah they never help oh my them gosh. did you send me that tiktok where it was like you know how like all of us now are conditioned like i can't eat unless i'm watching my show yeah like i'll literally i'm my, an ipad baby my food will heart. go cold until i find my show yeah i saw someone that made a skit because you know, people are all over the hunger games right now yeah and she it was her like saving her food all day at, during the hunger games like she's in the hunger games until they show the movie in the air <laughs> that's funny. the in memoriam who, who died <laughs> It's not even in memoriam. It's just like, <laughs> this is who died today. <laughs> it's kind that of in memoriam. fucking funny. Anyways. Um, anyways, I watched them watch it and I was like, that's insane. Like it's, it, they start going a little bit cuckoo, right? Cause mm-hmm. they're, and they're in like 12 degree weather. Like it's free. Then they have to band together. Like they make their teams quickly and then they have to like learn how to like do stuff. And then they have to like learn how to hunt and all that shit in the freezing cold. And then um, the prize is like $100,000 or something like that. And it's not split amongst it. them. Not worth it at and all. And it's, it's literally just to outlast each other. Like whoever's last. What? And then they have to like go and find the money once once they get to the very end. They're like, here, it's here. And it's like clues. And they have to go and find it. And so like they start sabotaging each other because yeah. they want it to end faster. Mm-hmm. And so like this one guy, like once he like, he's like, fuck my team. Because one of the teams is like evil. Okay. Um. And they start playing dirty. Mm-hmm. And so like 
uh, nobody likes that team, I guess. But then this one guy's like, fuck this team. I'm going to go to the other one. So mm -hmm. he like just, he steals all their sleeping bags and like burns their shit and then goes to the other team. And he's like, guys, don't worry. They're never going to last. I took all their things. Oh my God. And then that team goes, you can't come here. Cause they're like, this guy's crazy. You can't join our team. Yeah. And then he's like, well now I don't have a team. And then he just goes and he shoots the flare gun and goes, oh. you know, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I tried. May have overstepped a little bit. My so whole point in telling that story is that that's how I feel when I have to put toilet paper between my legs. I feel that. I feel like I'm roughing it. Like yeah, that. I've seen a lot of people that have been on Survivor talk about how, you know, they obviously they don't provide tampons and stuff. Mm -hmm. but they have to figure out ways to when they get their period. And they're out there for like 60 days, dude. It's fucking crazy. Nothing worse. No, I'm not an outdoors girl. And I'm not afraid to say that. Like, not even a little <laughs> bit. Not even a little. I don't camp. I don't like none of that shit appeals to me. Not even a little bit. Yeah. When they're like camp and they're like sleep on the ground, I'm like, for what? Like, why? I know. I think there's a new show where they're putting a bunch of celebrities like on a spaceship. And like a real spaceship? I don't know if it's like actually in space. I was but gonna say, they can't do that. There's no, I no know, way. but they're living on like a, a spaceship setting. And I don't know what they're like actual celebrities or like reality TV show people. Yes, to both. I was gonna say, I feel like reality TV show people would do it's that. It's like a mix of both, but I don't remember who's in it. That's kooky. You know, it's what like is, kind of like, a, like big brothery. Yeah. yeah. Like kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, that's our zoomies. I know. Also, a last zoomie. I think I might watch Queen Charlotte because of the audio that's going viral. What's the audio? The one you sent me with the Psalm one girl that was like, oh, I didn't realize that was from Queen yeah. Charlotte. He goes, yeah. I love you. Yeah. And then if you was, that's why Fanita said, I don't want to watch the show anymore because this isn't real. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if men are going to talk to me like this, I don't want to watch Literally. it. And the guy in it's pretty hot. So I'm going to watch it. I will watch it. I've never watched any of Bridgerton. I did try to watch the very first season. I tried. I, I did didn't. My, I did my absolute best. I did. I tried. I didn't like it. And I love period pieces. And I love the fact that they um, oh, cast uh, blindly. Yeah. yeah, blindly. I love that. Um, I just couldn't, I don't know what it was. Maybe I need to like focus more and I could watch it, but there's so much sex in that show. It's kind of nuts. I know. I watched, um, like it's a lot. I watched <laughs> Trixie and Katia watch the show sex life too. Have you watched that? Have you ever, I've never even heard of that show. Is that the one where they gave, there's like dominatrixes and they give them money to build their sex room? No. Cause I saw a girl who it's literally like a show. Like it's like a pretend, like there's like a whole plot and everything. Oh, it's not a reality show. No. Oh, okay. No, it's like, it's like a, there's like a storyline, but yeah. it's like a girl who's like married, but she used to like be fucking and sucking all the time. Okay. And then she gets bored in her marriage and she starts like imagining her boyfriend mm. and it's just nothing but sex. Like, like, literally every other scene is them fucking each other. I, I watched like, Trixie and Katya watch it. I feel like you make up a lot of things when you're on here. I'm not kidding. Look it up. That just sounds like something you made up. Well, it's just like the, the movie 365. The That's 365. what I was thinking of. Something you it's made up. It's the exact same thing. I But that but the show is even more sex, which is crazy. And like, I watched Trixie and Katya watch it. That's how I found out about it. And Trixie goes, is this like allowed like why are we watching this she's like we're just sitting in wigs watching porn together like what the fuck is this because it's graphic it's like really and they show they show like penises and shit and they show buttholes and all that and they show titties obviously they always show titties oh my god yeah but the 365 one like they didn't even do that in there i don't think i don't think in bridgerton you see you see butts you know they yeah show men's oh butts. yeah they always show butts and they always show titties <laughs> yeah but they never show dick and they never show vagina yeah. The 365 one is literally a fan fiction, like, okay. come to life. No, That's I, why people I like know. That. You had, like, a 30-minute explanation. Well, remember. just, like, the, what was the one? After? The Harry Styles one, yeah. Oh, what was I going to say? There's, um, like, 17 of those. If you, could, if you could sleep with anyone in the Game of Thrones universe, who would you pick? You know I'm not going to answer that question. It's no one, huh? No. Mine's the Hound. Okay. That's the end of my thing. Why'd you say it's no one, huh? Like, you were going to say that, but then you just said the Hound. No, I'm the saying, hound's the one with the fucked up face. Yeah, I'm saying it's no one, right? For you. Yeah. Yeah. I already, of all the people, that's who you're picking. <laughs> yeah, I would pick the hound. Even though Pedro Pascal's in that movie. In that I show? didn't think he was attractive in the show. I wasn't in it. Rewatch it. You think so? He's a bisexual king in that show. No, I know. I thought one of you know he was with that lady. Yeah. And she had the three daughters. Yeah. One of the daughters I thought was really, really pretty. Well, they were his kids too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What his name was Oberyn Martell. People have been reminding me on my yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Were they not called the Sand People or something? 
or the Sand Kingdom? No. Where did I make? Did I make that up? I think so. Or snakes? Are you thinking of Dune? Just kidding. (laughs) Which I'm also excited to see. Okay. And that's the end of my zoomies. Dune, I didn't. It didn't move me the way I thought it was going to. Dune has. Well, first of all, I love. I love. It's honestly. Wait, hold up. Yeah, it's it's what's camp is that they they marketed that whole bitch around Zendaya mm-hmm. and she was in it for two and a half seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she's in the second one, but like that's hilarious. Yeah. Like they really bait and switched everybody. They were like, come and see it. Maybe she's in it. And ah, she's, she's not, not in it. Sucker, I'll take your twelve dollars though, bitch. But Oscar Isaac was in it, sexy. And I never got the hype on Timmy until I watched Dune. I think Jason Momoa was in it too. Yeah. Yeah, he was. And this new one, Florence Welch is, oh, I, that's Florence and the Machine. <laughs> Florence Pugh? Pugh. Is in the new Dune? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And so is Austin Butler. He plays this crazy what? bald guy and everyone's putting- uh, Teen Beach Movie? Oh, wait, no. That's- <laughs> <laughs> That's Ross Lynch. <laughs> My bad. The way I said Austin Butler and I don't this know- This is that Dylan I don't know how we got to Austin and Allie. This is- Dylan Minnette all over again. No. I'm so sorry. There, one played Elvis and was nominated for many awards. And one is in a band with all his siblings. Are they not both white? There you go. They're not the same people. No shit, bitch. I know they're not. I'm just saying like they're both white. So that's like I obviously hey, think Austin and Allie. You that's saw why. one at the Oscars. The other one you did not see at the Oscars. Well, that means nothing to me because I didn't even talk to him. So, you know what I mean? But you. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at Julie. So I personally have never had to use the morning after pill, but I do have a lot of friends that have navigated that experience. For them, it can be a little bit scary, a little bit nerve wracking, and honestly kind of awkward. So if you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom broke, or you're just not sure, we're excited to talk about a new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame. When it comes to complex and stressful choices around your health, they believe people deserve products that are easy in every way, easy to find, easy to take, easy to relate to, and easy to understand. So Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as plan B or other morning after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy, and it's no risk to future fertility. It works best when taken right away or within 72 hours of unprotected sex. Julie just launched at CVS, but you can also find Julie at Target and Walmart stores across the U.S. You can also order online to have for the future just in case. So you can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. That's juliecare.co to learn more. Now back to the episode. I know I saw him from a distance. That's literally going to be the promo clip that I put up. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because that's one of the most insane things. Well, I was thinking beach movie. I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking Austin and Allie. That's why. Yeah, I heard you all right. White guy, white guy, you know. Same person. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said the same thing to me about Dylan Minnette, like how he looks nothing like Logan Lerman. He doesn't. And like, they look nothing like, who's the other guy? Paul Mescal. Yeah. I mean, I know now, but I'm saying like my brain, like they're just like same, 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 same. You know what I mean? They're like paper dolls. Like when you open them, that's how they all. Like a Russian doll. No, no, paper dolls. Like when you cut them and then you open them and they're all the same. I'm not correcting you. That is what you're saying is correct. I'm saying like a Russian doll. Oh, yeah. Anyways, you were saying you didn't get the hype on on Timothy Chalamet until Dune. Yeah. He looks and is built like a small Victorian boy. Mm-hmm. Like he's literally looks and is built like the main character in Course Bride. Mm-hmm. So not my, not my vibes, but I'm sure he's nice. Like, I think he's hot. I don't want to sleep with him. Like, I don't, I think of a lot of, like, there's only like a few men I can think of that I want to sleep with. Like who? The Hound. (laughs) I was going to (laughs) say. Have you ever seen him out of character? I think so. Are you thinking of the Hound or are you thinking of the Mountain? Drew, the Hound (laughs) escorted Arya. I know who the Hound is. Okay. Well, you don't know a lot of people. So that's why like. I, you're saying that. Characters. I'm saying characters. Yeah, sure. 
I don't know real life people, but you don't know characters. Yeah, I am yeah. talking about the hound. Okay. Anyways. The mountain is the one that's like he the used zombie to be, one, yeah. Well, he used to be like a strong man. The mountain's too. the one that this is a spoiler the, that killed Pedro Pascal's character. Yes, but he's the one who's like a strong man. Yeah, and in, the member they the kind of like uh yeah exactly yeah, yeah he's like, he's like six seven yeah yeah not even I think he's bigger than that probably but anyways, Fuck if I know um I don't remember what I was saying but okay are you ready you were just saying there were a few men that you yeah sleep with. Pedro Pascal okay and maybe the Hound and that's it. That I can think of off the top of my noggin, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Okay. <laughs> Good for you, I guess. <laughs> I didn't say that for validation. <laughs> I'm just sharing a piece. Of I know. I, I'm. I'm just like acknowledging it. That's what I, I said. heard you. That's All what right. I said. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so we're doing a part three of "Am I the Asshole?" because we still had a bunch of them left. Yeah, and you guys really like these because you guys like the advice. Yeah, so for those of you that are just tuning in, this is where the Am I the Assholes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. it's at 21 minutes, I think, because we did talk, so it's probably a different. Okay, this first one's from Mackenzie. She said, am I the asshole for not wanting to explain myself for ghosting someone? I've cut out numerous friends and boys in my life since I was in elementary school, and it's usually people who have done me wrong or simply I don't have room for it in my life. Mm -hmm. Recently, I've been getting texts from old friends and dates asking me why I cut them off or attempting to reconnect again, and I typically don't respond. They continue to send me messages begging to see me again and talk about the situation. I don't feel like I owe them any explanation behind my decision because from experience, they don't have enough understanding or self-awareness to know my perspective or use it as an excuse to pop up constantly in my life again. I'm tired of talking talking to brick walls. Am I the asshole? Um, I feel like this could go one or two ways. Like, I'm a fan of ghosting personally, I think. But there's an asterisk next to that because I think that it depends on the situation. Like, I think ghosting is, is fine and not a big deal if you barely knew somebody, if you went on a couple dates. If that, like you didn't really talk, you didn't really like, you didn't like have that connection, especially if you date men. I just think like, I don't owe you anything. I don't yeah. need to fucking tell you when I don't want to talk to you anymore. Like, I don't even know you. Like you barely know me. I barely know you. Let's just like, we're like two passing ships in the night. It doesn't really matter. I think it's strange for people to expect that others owe them an explanation why they don't talk anymore. Like I, I maybe that's just because I personally would never do that. Like if someone yeah. just started to go see me, I'd be like, well, yeah, it, it depends on, on, that's why I said it depends on, on the connection. I think like, yeah. I think it's fucked up to go somebody that you spent every waking moment with. Like you, you really had a, a relationship of some mm -hmm. kind, not necessarily a label, but like you guys had an interpersonal relationship, a connection. You guys were intimate with each other in the sense that you shared a lot of feelings, maybe you spent like a lot of time together over a long period of time, mm -hmm. right? Like let's say like six months or more. Yeah. I think it's fucked up to go somebody like that. Sure. Be in the sense of like, you know, like you this person becomes a regular and then all of a sudden they just ignore you or they drop off the face of the earth. I think that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Um, but I think like if you went on a couple dates with someone, if you hung out with them a few times, like you don't really owe them an explanation as to why you don't want to talk anymore. I do get what you're saying though. Because the reason why I'm a fan of ghosting is because, like, I don't need to know why you didn't want to talk to me anymore. Yeah. If you don't tell me, I'll make up my own story. Mm -hmm. I'm two women for him. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'll literally lie to myself. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Because like, who's going to tell me otherwise? Mm -hmm. You? You fucked off. So, like, who cares? Yeah. That's why, I, that's why I think ghosting is fine. And as someone who has ghosted many people, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. And that's why I compared it to, like, sitting on the train with someone, like, if you make conversation with someone on the train for a few stops, like, do I have to tell you when I get off? Yeah. Do I have to explain why I'm, Where I'm off? going? Hey, yeah. this is my stop, by the way, because I have work and I know we just met, but like, I don't need to do that shit. I just stand up and get off the train. Like, I don't fucking need to say anything. Yeah. So it depends. But like, you're also saying like friends too. friends is also again, like if you have a close connection with them and then you just kind of fuck off, like. I don't know. I guess it all depends on the reason why. Yeah. And I feel like maybe you sound like a little bit, maybe not a very confrontational person. So maybe that's why you're yeah, like, Yeah, are you a mm. runner? You sound like a runner. I'm not a runner, but like, that's why I said like, if it's someone I barely know, I don't give a damn. Yeah. It depends on the circumstance. Like Drew Yeah. Saying. So I don't think you're the asshole, especially if like, I mean, 
And I will say the only time if you've known them for a long time and you just ghost them, the only time I think that's fine is if they did something awful. Yeah. So in hearing you said people who've done me wrong or I don't have room for in my life. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it depends on. Yeah. Like if they did you wrong and then you're like, okay, I'm never going to talk to you again. Yeah. I think that's fine. Who gives a shit? I do. I, the only time I think people ask like, Hey, why'd you do that? Is because I think sometimes they think closure will help them move forward. Yeah, as someone who always thinks that, it doesn't, so. <laughs> yeah, sometimes closure doesn't necessarily help you move forward. Sometimes it does, mm -hmm. but sometimes I think it it hinders you a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I said gaslight yourself. Like, if they go, if you get ghosted, tell yourself the story that serves you. I think that works. Lie to yourself. Fuck it. Yeah. Who's going to prove you wrong? I feel like you don't want to talk. Don't want. Who's to. gonna tell you you're wrong? Yeah. Nobody. No one. You know what I mean. If you don't want to talk to someone, I don't feel like you should have to. So Capricorn. Okay. Next one <laughs> is Mariko. She said, "My boyfriend at the time was a personal trainer at the gym. He really wanted a massage gun for his birthday, which I splurged on for a few hundred dollars. Was on it top a of gun? I have probably one of those. on top of throwing him a surprise party slash dinner." A few weeks later, I discovered he was texting girls from the gym and was basically cheating on me. Uh, we broke up, nope. and when I moved out of my our apartment, I took the massage gun with me because fuck that, he didn't deserve it. Am I the asshole since it was a birthday gift? Hell no. As someone <laughs> who went through a breakup, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. I told I said this last episode. Sometimes being petty is good for the soul. Yeah. So you take that's the, I said, you gives, take the lipsticks, you take you, the therapy. That's why I said give yourself the win. Of course he doesn't deserve that fucking massage gun. No. And if it's a Theragun, those things are expensive. Even if it's not, they're still expensive. So I know, but, I, but those Theraguns especially are super expensive. Oh, no, expensive. I know. I'm sure and they come with, with all the different, like, heads. heads. Yeah, dude. That thing rocks. It also kind of hurts, though. <laughs> it's kind of aggressive. But yeah, I would take that shit, too. Fuck it. <laughs> I would. What yeah, else did so, I buy in here? Yeah. No, literally. What else? What else? is mine that's why i said if i paid for it and we break up because you were awful it's mine now yeah it's no longer yours i rescind my gift give it back give it to me now yeah when dason went through a breakup i told dason to take <laughs> did he allowed to cut it out she took she made me take something that she bought for that person so mm-hmm I sure as fuck did. It was expensive too. And I brought it all the way back. And to be fair, it wasn't something that was like for that person. It was something for the animals. Yeah. That Dason was taking with her. So I said, I literally told her and then she was like, well, you didn't give that to me. And I go, no, I gave it as a gift and consider this me rescinding that fucking gift. And then I text my mom separately and I said, put that thing on top of the car <laughs> and fucking bring it back. And my mom was like, don't worry, I'm bringing it back. I'm all over it. Yeah. So I rescind that gift. That was me being petty and I don't regret it. Not even a little bit. And I still use it now. Yeah. So. so. All right, friends, we're going to take one more quick little break. And this is with our friends at Manscaped. So friends, June is just around the corner. And my guess is that you haven't purchased a Father's Day gift. Am I right? Well, look no further than the sponsors of today's show because our friends at Manscaped are dedicated to upgrading his grooming game from face to waist. Oh my goodness. Their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the total package dedicated to making sure all fathers go from dad to daddy this year. Okay. Have him join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping with the code 2 idiotgirls at manscaped.com. Mama's gonna like this one. So... I personally am not a male, but I do know many males in my life, and I know for them that grooming is super important. So when I received the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, I gave it to my dad, and he uses it a lot. And he said it's super easy uh, to put together. I mean, if he can do it, honestly, I feel like anyone can do it. Even my little brother, he's been trying it out, giving it a whirl, and he really likes it. So let's start with the Ultimate Father's Day MVP, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, like I mentioned. Inside this package, he will find their signature Beard Hedger Trimmer, 
beard shampoo and conditioner. Because if you didn't know, they need to do that to their beards. Why would I know that? I didn't. Now I do. Also has a beard oil, beard balm, and two free gifts with their signature beard comb and scissors. They brush their beards, guys. That This is like a real life thing. So with 20 haircutting links and a singular guard, he'll be able to craft his look like never before without a mess in the drawers. Something we all can appreciate, am I right? So you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code 2 girls at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code 2 idiot girls make this father's day one he won't forget with manscaped now back to the episode yes i've changed it got too cold sorry guys took the grandma sweater off Mm -hmm. this next one's from an anonymous person they said okay so my boyfriend and i always get into arguments and he always tells his friends and family about everything i keep dropping hints about how it makes me uncomfortable when everyone knows our business but he doesn't get it and still does that he also calls me a manipulator, but when I look back at text messages or situations, he's the one manipulating me. And I'm being 100% honest with you. Am I in the wrong for getting upset about this or no? Also, he keeps texting his exes, and I don't know, it's weird. Would you guys care if your significant other would text their ex? Okay, the first one. I don't want to unpack in there. So the first one is when they fight, uh, their boyfriend tells uh, their family and friends his family and friends about what happened and it makes them uncomfortable the one that submitted this you also said though that you keep dropping hints have you just like told him like hey don't do that yeah hey i hate when you do that when you do that that makes me feel bad because x y and z like sometimes you have to be like really blunt and honest with with people about your feelings because when you drop hints you're not like actually telling them what you want and like what's going to make you feel better but honestly given the other context like break up with this person this person sounds not good for you emotionally yeah if we put that aside and look at him texting his exes to answer your question no i don't fucking like that yeah i I would care a lot if my significant other i think it's i think it's i think it's specific to the person sometimes but i also think like why the fuck else would you need to talk to that person? Unless you share a child together, there's really no reason for you all to be contacting mm-hmm. each other. There's no reason. And when people are like, people can't stay friends with their exes. Cool. Don't date me then. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you're going to be friends with your ex, like what do you fucking need me for? I have enough friends. I don't need to be friends with anyone I used to yeah. talk to. It's not obviously it sounds like you're not very confrontational, but I feel like, but I also feel like that's common sense. No, I know. But if they're already, they're only dropping hints about being uncomfortable. I doubt they've told their partner. I don't like when you text, but even then, like if your partner calls you a manipulator and texts your exes, like I wouldn't expect you to be like, Hey, please don't tell people our business because they sound awful. Yeah. So like you're kind of just starting from zero at that point. I would say to break up with this person. No, I don't think you're an asshole for, like feeling like those things make you uncomfortable. Yeah. But maybe you can approach your boyfriend and tell them that you don't like it. And then how they react will determine how you, your next decision. That's what I would do. I disagree. Break up with them. Someone who texts their exes for what? For what? For what? Yeah. And they're, they're texting their ex and like, how would that person feel if you were texting yours? You know what I mean? Like nine times out of 10, it doesn't go both ways, Mm -hmm. especially with a man, unfortunately. But I feel like also like calling you a manipulator and then you looking at, I mean, I don't, I don't know because I don't know the context of your fights. He could feel like he's being manipulated. That could not be your intention or even really the case, but like that could just be how he feels. Yeah. I think we just need more um, context. I think the X thing though gives me enough. You think? So? Yeah, I guess that gives that. me more than enough. Con- I don't need to hear anything else. It sounds like you guys are not a good match for each other. Because I'm sure he could find somebody else that wouldn't care if he was talking to his exes. But if that's not you, that's okay. You don't have to pretend to be someone that you're not. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. No, I wouldn't either. I just think unless you share kin. There's really no reason to be talking. <laughs> there should be no connection. What do you whatsoever. What do you need to talk for? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you guys talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. No reason for it. And if they're like, you're just jealous and insecure. Okay, well, we'll go be with somebody else then. Go be with your ex that you're texting. Yeah. Okay. This next one's from Sydney. She said, okay, am I the asshole for getting a working interview at my ex-boyfriend's job after he broke up with me? When my ex broke up with me after leading me on for a year, we were dating, but every time I asked what we were, he would say he wanted no label or expectations. So basically a situation ship. Anyways, I applied at his job at a driving job out of spite and pettiness, and I got a working interview to spend a day doing a ride along. I told him I had an interview there, which he raged about, but I just said, see you Thursday at work. And I did the ride along, which was awful, but I pissed him off, which honestly was a win for me. I feel like you think I'm going to be on your side and I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. you like, I guess my thing is, what did you get out of that? You know what I mean? I know I've talked about how being petty sometimes is good. That's different. How? Because it's manipulative. Yeah. Like it seems, it seems as though you did that to get his attention mm -hmm. one and two, to get a rise out of him. But what did you get out of that? I um, in situationships, mm -hmm. are you boyfriend, girlfriend? No. So you can't mm -hmm. even really call him an ex, but I get why. Like someone you used to fuck around with, I yeah. get it. And situationships. But they're all circumstantial. So maybe in some they do, maybe some they don't. Then why is no. it? It would be a relationship. Yeah, then, right? they're okay. not. Situationships are literally like sneaky links. Like they're like people you just, you, you hook up with. Uh, like friends with benefits? Essentially, yeah. Okay. It's everything that a relationship is without being called a partner mm -hmm. like without the official label which is why i think they're a waste of time sure. personally like i don't work like that either you're with me or you're not <laughs> like, or you're against me or you're or you're my op <laughs> i don't i don't i don't fucking like situationships i think they're messy i think that they're misleading and i feel like someone always ends up hurt in situationships mm -hmm. always rarely ever i feel the same way about that that i do about like platonic friendships between heterosexual people. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they work. I will say, I think your ex situation ship, I think he's an asshole for leading you on for a year. Yeah. I but, mean, that's obvious. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just trying to give, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> side with her on one thing, but I, I do think it's weird to, and you admitted that you did it to be petty. Mm -hmm. So like, do you even really want that job? Did you do it just to piss him off? Did you do it to embarrass him? Either way, like, it wasn't really a win because, like, you sound hurt, right? Which makes sense yeah. because he hurt you. But then you just, like, you upset him and then what do you have? Like, I guess half a win because you got to see him get upset. But, like, is that really what you wanted? Or do you want his attention because you actually really like him and you wish that it had worked out in a relationship? Which you know I, I mean? could see. Like, that makes sense. And that's sense. okay. That's yeah. valid. But I just don't – I don't think – Things like that. I don't think coping mechanisms like that are healthy. I don't think they help in you. In the long run. In course. the long run. Like you, that's one of those things where you feel good for like a day and then you feel like shit the next day. You know what I mean? And hey, I'm speaking as someone who used to do shit. I used to do petty shit sometimes to like get the attention of someone that fucking annoyed me. Like pissed me off because like it didn't work out for whatever reason. I've done shit like that and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> like... I did it like once or twice and I was like, hey, this sucks. Like if I'm really honest with myself, I'm hurting because I wish that it had worked out differently. You know what I mean? Yeah, because breakups are hard no matter whether they're in real relationships or in situationships. Yeah, like, I mean, you're distancing yourself. You're not seeing each other anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if anything, like, you know, he was probably like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore because... I want to like date for real or whatever and stuff like that actually hurts. Like it really does hurt yeah. to hear. Um, especially if you're intimate with somebody. So. Yeah. I'm just thinking like in the long, like this isn't, I, I don't know if this was like healing for you. And I would say that in quotation marks um, because doing stuff like this in the long run doesn't make you feel better. Like Drew was saying. Yeah. Like, I mean, I always say healing takes many different forms, which I do believe. But I think hurting someone else in order to heal doesn't truly heal you. It's almost like a bandaid over a bullet hole. Like it's just a temporary fix. It's not like a 
you'll still feel upset like about how it ended even after the fact. So like, I mean, I feel like since you wrote into this, I feel like, you know, whether or not that was a cool thing to do. Yeah. Um, because if, if you, because if, if you he, felt good about it, yeah. I doubt you would have written in. And so if that. he like, let's just, so he broke up with you. Right. Mm -hmm. What if he went to your job and did that just to bother you? Yeah. Like that would piss me off. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, and listen, I'll be checked into the hospital and charged with, with arson or something before I take the side of a man. Right. I'll say that much like a terrible man, especially, but in this particular case, I'm not necessarily siding with him. I'm siding with you, the healed version of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that didn't make you feel better. And even then, like, you're going to think about how, like, you're literally going to think to yourself, like, oh, he's probably so mad and he's probably telling everyone. And like, does that make you feel good? Like him talking shit on all the, to all those people that you saw and met that day. He's like, that bitch is crazy. Don't fucking hire her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just messy. See what I mean? Situationships, they're messy. I advise against them, to be honest. But if you feel good, it's more, all that matters. More power to you. Yeah. Okay. This is, la this is the last one, guys. Okay. So this one is anonymous. And she said, am I the asshole for getting a colleague of mine fired, making him lose his full rate scholarship in grad school because he's annoying as fuck? I started grad school for opera this year with a teaching assistantship that provides a full ride. I was friends with this guy who had the same opportunity, but as the semester went on, he was coming on to every girl and not only the grad program, but undergrads too, which is a big no-no, especially if they're under your jurisdiction as a TA. He also has a ton of self-esteem issues and it's manifested in him being annoying in rehearsals and making fun of others to deflect. Not only did the other TAs want him gone, but the head of the department hated his guts too. Needless to say, we made a joint effort to get him fired and now he sulks around the school. We're nice to him only so we can learn facts about his sad life and tell each other about them because he's so annoying. Are we assholes? I mean, you had me in the first one. I was just going to say that. Yeah. End. I mean, in short, no. If he's a fucking creeper. Perv, yeah. And he's a bad person, then no, I don't think. I don't think you guys necessarily got him fired. Like, I mean, I'm sure you guys don't like him and you didn't want him to be there, but ultimately what got him fired are his actions. Mm -hmm. Because if someone's just annoying, you can't get them fired for that, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I wish. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> people that you just don't get along with, you can't always get fired. But clearly he was fired for a viable reason, which is like, he's a fucking pervert and inappropriate and just unprofessional overall. Yeah. So I don't think that makes you an asshole for being like, Hey, I'm going to report you for all your malfeasions. Cause you're the worst. You make everyone uncomfortable. Yeah. And then you're like, and it works out. Cause I also hate you. So I'm going to report you. I don't think that makes you an asshole. Um, that last bit though, where you say you guys are only nice to him to learn sad details about his life. I feel like you guys won. So there's no need to spend any more time with him. Yeah. He's clearly a big creepo. Like let him. Why? Also, why is he still there? Well, he lost his teaching assistantship. So he still goes to the school. He's oh, just I thought he lost his scholarship. Yeah. Which you get scholarships by being a TA, like a grad assistant. Mm -hmm. So, so he's, he's still just paying the, out of pocket. Yeah. Probably? He's still in the grad program. Oh, okay. I mean, that sucks, but maybe he shouldn't have been making everyone uncomfortable. Well, yeah. I mean, clearly he deserves to have lost his, his positions. Um, but I just think like if I like truly hate someone or I, I find them intolerable, I don't spend my free time talking to them. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like especially if they make you uncomfortable yeah, and you, you went they, through all that effort to get them out, I wouldn't spend any more time talking to them. I can count on maybe one hand the amount of people I like genuinely hate. Mm -hmm. Like like hate. And I'm not saying people like like, you know, like Ron DeSantis, like, fuck him. Like, I hate him, but like, I've never met him. I'm talking about people I've met in real life. I could probably count on one hand how many people like that. I would like rather dive headfirst into a volcano than hang out with them. Mm. Not very many people. So like, I can tell you what I'm not doing in my free time looking for them so I could talk to them so I can learn things about them. Yeah. It reminds me of like when people check up on their exes to see that they're doing worse than them. <laughs> 
Sometimes I well, feel that's like- that's different. I feel like because it's parasocial, so you're not even like oh sure you're not talking to them. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Going and finding them and being like, yeah, you're still still doing you're that still thing. Still struggling. That makes me feel good. Yeah, if it's like someone that fucked you over. I would do that. Like yeah, I would do that parasocially. I wouldn't interact with him. That's my point. Like parasocially, yeah. Like go and look and. But I guess doing it in a way where like yeah, I yeah, that's cool, but not like. Oh, did you hear this new sad thing? It just seems a little yeah. mean. And you don't seem like a mean person. Yeah. So it just seems unnecessary. I won't even yeah. say mean because he's a bad person. So what is mean? It's just like sure. it's, it's PEMDAS. It all cancels itself out. But okay. like, it's just unnecessary. Like when I hate someone, the last person I want to see in my free time is them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I will say that that's cool that your, your department took it super seriously enough. That you guys like enough. banded together. Yeah, because I think that's I cool. feel like most of the times that stuff's not taken seriously. So until something scary happens. Yeah, yeah literally. It's like something irreversible happens. Going to grad school for opera? Slay. slay. <laughs> Big slay. I just think like get over there and do your vocal exercises stop talking to that guy go warm up don't waste any more breath on him no literally i just that's why i said like if i hate you i'm not talking to you and i'm sure as fuck not being nice to you like yeah. you guys said you're all being nice to him to learn shit no way that's why sometimes in my life i've had people like talk to other people and be like i just don't i don't know if the, i don't know if she likes me talking about me and literally every single person that knows me that has heard that, they go, if Drew didn't like you, you would know. Yeah. So. You would not have to guess with me. <laughs> like, I feel like with most people, don't you think? Or do you think some people hide it well? I think some people hide it well. I think some people are really good. I mean, I think it's a skill you adapt. Sure. You know what I mean? Like for the workplace or school. But like, if I hate you, I'm not pretending. No matter the circumstance, no matter what situation we're yeah, in. Yeah, whether it's a professional. You're going to yeah. know I fucking hate you. Like, you're going to know. You won't have to guess with me. So I just feel like I'm not going out of my way to talk to one person or be nice to them. Yeah. Just to like kiki and talk and laugh at how awful their life yeah, is. Yeah, like, I don't I'm think you should have that. to maintain like cordial relationships with people. You, yeah, you that's don't my point. To, like yeah. you don't, you don't need to like talk You don't to owe them anymore. anything. Yeah. yeah, they're gone. That's why I said. So just like that guy, you don't owe him anything. That's why I said vanquished. So just take the dub. And then when you see him, be like, <laughs> and that's it. You know what I mean? Boom. Boo. Or tell other people. That's what I would do. Hey, you know what? Redirect that energy <laughs> and be like, hey, that guy's a fucking perv. That's what I would do. Yeah. I'd tell everybody. And I'd be like, and you can tell him I said that. Like, if he asks who told you that, tell him it was me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I would do. Like, like spread it the other way. You know what I'm saying? Like, warn other people. It's kind of like when you're in high school and, like, this is so fucked up. But, like, mm -hmm. there was always, like, someone that's a creepo. Like one of your teachers. Like a teacher or a faculty member. Of like everyone's sort. like, oh yeah, that guy, he's so creepy. He's a bit creep. And like nobody ever reports it, but you all just tell each other. I mean, I'm sure someone has and they just don't take us seriously, mm. which is so commonplace, which is why I'm glad your fucking school took it seriously. Yeah. But like a lot of times you just warn your fellow colleagues. Why do they always warn you about teachers? Of the, that's just a thing. Well, that's the shitty part, especially like, like we told you guys, we're older. So like when we were in high school, it was just like a thing. Like mm -hmm. we just, we all warned each other, but like nothing was ever done. Like those people were always there. Yeah. Which is fucking horrible. It's just like a very unfortunate reality. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. Oh, uh, again, we will actually be posting a poll sometime this week. Please look out for it on our Instagram. But if you enjoyed this episode, you can stream all of our episodes of our audio version of our podcast everywhere you can stream podcasts. And the video version is always on the YouTube channel. But other than that, we love you. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.